Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show on Monday the 4th of March. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for your company. We'll be looking back over the quarterfinal ties at the weekend. There's still one to play and we'll discuss it in the company of Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson. Of course, Ruffy with a particular interest in one of the quarterfinals. But let's look at today's main headlines. Yeah, lots to talk about. And don't forget, you can interact with us live on Facebook. Rafi and Barry, ready to answer <coughs> any of your questions. Uh, over and above that, we'll be uh, discussing in detail uh, some of the quarterfinal ties and tonight's tie at Firhill between Partick Thistle and Hearts. The draw coming up right after that game finishes. And of course, really looking forward to it because Rafi's picking up the bill and taking me to hospitality. Uh, Barry, a late call off, may I add? which is uh, a real error on his part. Um, anyway, uh, we start with sad news, which is, of course, <coughs> uh, the passing of Eric Caldwell, Rangers and Scotland great at the age of 84. Uh, over 400 appearances for the Ibrox club over a 13-year period, five league titles, two Scottish Cups and three Scottish League Cups as well. 40 Scotland caps and uh, I think... Uh, I'm not overstating it here. A true great at Ibrox, Barry Ferguson. Yep, a legend. Um, I was lucky enough to meet him on several occasions when he was doing hospitality at Ibrox. Um, always a nice guy, always interested in how your career was going and he was always giving you bits of advice. So, no, it's a sad day. Yeah, he could play off either foot, Ruffy, on either side of the park. Um, that just shows you how good they were in those days. And he was actually part of what I consider one of, I think, down in history, one of the uh, you know all-time great Ranger sides of the early 60s that had Jim Baxter in his absolute pomp. Uh, and, of course, they reached the semi-finals of uh, the European Cup uh, and uh, then got to the European Cup Winners' Cup final in 61 as well. Yeah, he's one of these players, you know, that uh, stalwarts of the team. There, there's not many guys who are at uh, teams for, for that long, you know, and uh, that was a mark of him. You know, he just loved... Uh, playing with Rangers and being about Rangers and, and as Barry said then they'll be sadly missed by a lot of supporters particularly the older ones because they'll remember him even in a Scotland jersey Yep, absolutely. And uh, from everyone on the football show, our thoughts and condolences to everyone connected with Eric Caldo's family at this difficult time so from the loss of a great <coughs> to something that I'm sure Eric Caldo would have enjoyed, which was, of course, uh, Scottish Cup football uh, over the weekend. Uh, there were a number of tasty ties on offer. Our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi looks back at the three already played. Neil Lennon won on his return to Easter Road as thunderous strikes from the ever-present James Forrest and Scott Brown knocked Hibbs out of the cup and gave Celtic another day in the diary at Hampden. Aberdeen and Rangers played out a one-all draw that was fiery as ever. Steven Gerrard moaned at the pitch conditions, but Derek McInnes felt his side should have won on the balance of chances. They'll do it all again next Tuesday. And Inverness, Caledonian Thistle have the chance of repeating their 2015 Cup success after they deservedly beat Dundee United 2-1 at Tannadice, thanks to a last-minute winner from Aaron Doran. Yeah, that's how it looks so <laughs> far, and we'll discuss uh, Hart's journey to Fairhill to take on Partick Thistle uh, just shortly. But uh, first and foremost, Neil Lennon's return to Easter Road was a happy one as the Celtic interim manager. Uh, in the end, two quality goals finished off Hibbs Ruffy. Yeah, I have to say they were quality, particularly James Forrest. I thought his touch, the way he sort of just went by a couple of people and then launched it into the top corner. Fantastic goal. And again, <laughs> Scott Brown. You know, what a strike that was. He had something you don't see in his makeup, you know, being that in and round about the 18 yard uh, box, but certainly a tremendous finish. And I think the second goal was always going to be the one that was going to kill Hibbs. Strangely enough, Hibbs didn't really look as if there were <coughs> any great threat to Celtic throughout that game, Barry, which was surprising. 
Yeah, I was just going to say that word. I was surprised. It's like they, they sat off and let Celtic have possession. Normally, when you go Easter Road, Hibs on top of you don't give you a minute's peace. So I was, I was surprised at the tactics. But if I'm being honest, watching the game, Celtic were always comfortable. And and with that in mind, and just picking up on that point, uh, Ruffy, the tactics Neil Lennon at times will make those changes to, if he if he doesn't think there are certain things going well. Um, you know, he did in his first game <coughs> charge at Tynecastle when he you know hauled off Tolian, put on Lustig, make, made a few uh, formation changes in the game to try and alter the outcome of the game, and again, uh, equally so in this match, Forrest suddenly becoming a real threat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hibs would have been looking at the Celtic lineup and going, look, this is a wee bit understrength, you know, compared to uh, being at full strength. You know, obviously we touched on Christie not being there, Rodrick not being there, Powerhouse in midfield, McGregor not being there. So they would have been quietly saying, look, maybe we've got a wee chance here. But no, I think Celtic went about the stall correctly. Obviously, Neil's got a wee bit of influence in there. You can see every player that's coming out into the press and talking about them, they're right behind them 100%. So that's just giving them that wee extra lift. Yeah, do you think he needs to win one trophy or if he bags the two, it seals the deal for him as a long-term manager again? I think if he just keeps him at the top of the league, I think he's the right man to take him forward. Um, you see the, the, the slight difference he's made. He's not scared to make a decision, putting, changing Burt, sorry, in Forrest. I thought Burt looked a lot more comfy out wide. Um, he looked a different player and Forrest, for me, was a difference just behind the main striker. Yeah, uh, conduct, again, rears its ugly head, uh, Ruffy. Uh, bottle thrown at Scott Sinclair, coins thrown at him as well. Celtic fans trashing around 80 seats and throwing flares onto the pitch. It's non-stop at the moment, every week, and strict liability is coming. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Uh, we've already discussed, you know, that uh, the fans taking it upon themselves. Uh, and I think some of them probably would, would want to do it if they knew it was coming around the corner, if that part of the stadium was going to get shut or the, or the, the whole bit's going to get shut. The, the reasonable fans don't want that to happen. So I think somebody needs to come up with a solution very, very quickly. I know there was arrests after some of the games, but if you arrest them, let's get them into the court as quick as possible. Let's get them punished. Let's get them fired out there and let's see what the rest of the supporters think with the punishment they're going to get. Because I think that's the only way it's going to happen initially. Because you're right, we're now going down the road that something serious is going to happen. Yeah, and sticking with that, it reared its ugly head in the game up at Petaudry as well. They were throwing seats. Um, there was, again, those sectarian chants, uh, flares thrown onto the pitch. Um, and again, the club has to pick up the tab on this one. Rangers and Celtic will be hit with fines, you know, with money that they have to pay for the for wrecking the stadium. Yeah, I've got to say, uh, obviously Rangers came out with a, a statement uh, the day before the game, which I thought was good. Um, but you watch a game again yesterday and as you see in the pictures there, seats getting thrown and obviously the chance again, it's... It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and I didn't the, like the I didn't like the 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 banner for Alfredo Morelos well, as well. I mean, is there any dignity left with some supporters? No, there's no need for things like that. No need. Um, I thought it was a ridiculous uh, banner. But listen, again, we're just going through a difficult time um, with things getting thrown about. Going back to the the Celtic game, I couldn't believe what I was watching when that Buckfast bottle got thrown on. If that connects with Scott Sinclair, he's got a serious serious injury there. Um, but and also moving up to Petaudry, you get at the end of the game, seats getting smashed and getting thrown. Somebody could be a. Is it going to take somebody to have a serious injury or getting took to hospital um, for things to be done? It's ridiculous uh, what's going on just now. Yeah, and again, no surprise, Ruffy. Uh, we've got the, the, you know, the PFA, you know, releasing a statement. Basically, uh, the chief executive Fraser Wisher just highlighting the fact that. Uh, again, the safety of the fans after the incidents at Easter Road, we stress again the throwing of objects at players, violence or any form of verbal abuse directed towards players must be taken seriously. And uh, it's a continuing rise in incidents that Fraser is going on to talk about. It's, it's physical, it's verbal, it's unacceptable. Yeah, but I think we have to realise that once you meet these people, it's not getting through. Barry's touched on it. It's how many warnings do you need? How many times can people, sensible people, come out and tell you not to do something and then the next day you go out and do it? You know, they, they have to be, they're the ones who have to be punished. And as I said earlier, immediately, you know, with large punishments. So 
everybody else around about can see, look, this is what's going to happen to us. Yeah. Uh, talking of Pataudry, uh, we will be discussing Aberdeen against Rangers on the park. There's a replay coming up as well on that one. And of course, the outcome of the Dundee United Inverness Cali Thistle. One of the most popular parts of the programme is fans of the programme snapping up T-shirts uh, in their favourite colours. Our team T-shirts are proving popular, especially in the quiz. Well, the quiz sometimes can pose a few problems here and there, but nevertheless, good luck if you've got an answer for it. Uh, we'll be running that quiz all the way through the week. Monday to Friday, you can join us uh, watching uh, the football in Scotland and talking about it. You can do it live on Facebook. You can give us your thoughts on Twitter and, of course, YouTube too. Uh, and let's not forget, as ever, uh, at 10 o'clock on That's TV Freeview Channel 8. Aberdeen against Rangers. Well, I'm not going to buy you that one on DVD. It wasn't a classic. Uh, I don't think the pitch helped. Steven Gerrard, certainly not happy with that, but happy with the equaliser that gets them a replay at Ibrox. Yeah, disappointing first half. They never get going, Rangers. Um, and I'm, I wasn't surprised that they got a reaction. I can imagine what was getting said in that dressing room at half time. And they got the perfect reaction, getting the goal back after a couple of minutes, uh, starting the second half. But overall, I think a draw was a fair result. Aberdeen certainly were the best team in the first half. Uh, Rangers come into it more in the second half, so I think a replay was a, the correct uh, result. Yeah, I'm getting uh, a few people <coughs> actually asking, can you ask Barry whether he would play uh, Katic um, in the, the games now rather than uh, Goldson? No, I would go for Goldson. Yep, OK. Yep. Um, always good to get uh, your thoughts on these things. You see, you can get an immediate reaction on uh, Facebook, Ruffy, and another one here which is mentioning to you, uh, obviously, your thoughts on tonight's game. Um, what about Katic over Worrell? No, I, I think um, Golson and Worrell uh, are the, the best partnership. Stick with them? Yep. OK. Um, I'm... I don't know about the Dons, I can't work them out, Ruffy. I think they've blown their chance. I think Rangers will win a week on Tuesday in the replay. Uh, the reason, you know, I think they had a, a guilt-edged opportunity with Considine. You're 40 yards out, you've got no pressure on the ball. You're facing the goal from the corner. All you have to do is stick it in the back of the net. They had three or four chances like that, couldn't take them. Yeah, they had three or four chances. But the, the big chance for me, again, was Alan McGregor, you know, coming up with the goods. You know, OK, stopped it with his feet. But uh, that was a saver for me, and I agree with you. The, obviously, there's a couple of suspensions coming up for Aberdeen as well. I think the big striker's out. He's suspended for that Cosgrove. one. So, you know, it's a home game with, for Rangers. You know, supporters will expect them to turn up on the night, and, and they are actually doing that just now. So, yeah, I personally would agree with you on that one. Yeah, job done for Rangers in the replay? Yeah, it's always difficult in a quarter final, but I would expect Rangers being at home and Aberdeen missing, I think, their main man at this moment in time, Cosgrove. I think Rangers have got to be favourites and Rangers have got to get to semi finals and finals, as simple as that. Yep, OK. Um, well, Robbo, I, I hope he doesn't get any <laughs> any fine, Ruffy, <laughs> for, for, for replicating Lenny's celebrations when you get a last minute winner for Inverness Cali Thistle that puts you in the semi final. Mm -hmm. It's only right and proper you dance about on the side of the, of the pitch, but. You know, if we're, if we're looking for consistency, he'll get it in the neck. Yeah, I don't think he was as mobile as Lenny. You know, he was <laughs> no, on he didn't the look as if he he was mobile. It was a sort of a I've well, went too far here, but uh, you know, if you're going to if you're going to win a game, you want it in two minutes into injury time. And uh, I think anybody who saw the game would say the best team won. You know, the the, the penalty decision uh, was a bit iffy for me, yeah. and, and the one that obviously was turned down. So. No, they've picked themselves up. Now, you have to give Robbo all the credit in the world. Robbo, uh, when we played them, I, I didn't think they were particularly good. But since then, they've they started to play. Yeah. Um, are they playoff material for you, Ruffy? Yeah, definitely now. I think 
when you get a cup run, you know, the whole dressing room is absolutely buzzing. You know, you're looking forward to every game that's coming up. And at this moment in time, that's what they'll be doing, obviously, with that win at the weekend. Yeah, um, and over and above that, we've got lots of people uh, talking about potentially uh, Player of the Year as well. We're reacting to it on Facebook. James Forrest again showed how he is Player of the Year this year, says Jimmy Devlin. I personally think at the moment, front runner for me is Morelos. Yep, uh, I do. I, I do agree with you. I think the amount of goals he scored, look, he was disappointing in, in Sunday, uh, no doubt about it. And James Forrest is, is starting to pick up a bit of form, but I think the two for me is definitely Morelos and uh, Callum McGregor. Yeah, um, and Jazz Sweeney says, um, uh, James Forrest, uh, is he better than Kent? Uh, Kent or James Forrest? Roughly, there's a tough one. I think Kent's got more about him, you know, I think he's faster, I think he's more direct, you know, James Forrest has got something, there's no doubt about that, I think obviously James Forrest will have more goals in him than, than Kent, but certainly Kent's the kind of player full-backs want to play, won't want to play against. Yeah, you'd take Kent over Forrest? No, I wouldn't, you know, I'm just saying the two of them. No, I'm <laughs> not the saying the way What are you on about? Well, you don't want me to trash the boy Kent, I'm no, just you saying don't need to trash the boy Kent's say a good take. player. Well, I'll say to you, I'll take, I'd take well, Forrest you, over Kent. you never asked me that, oh, you well. asked me about the two players, well. and I told you about the two of them. If you're now asking me <laughs> who would I pick my team, I'd take Forrest in my team. <laughs> Barry? I'll take Kent. I'll right. like, I'll like no, listen, that, uh, the, the simple fact is I'd go with Forrest is because he's, he's experienced. I think Kent, um, it's his first real season. Yes. He's playing, I think he's got so much gone from him. Um, two of them are, are great, old fashioned, I would say. Yeah. Wingers, and you don't really get to see that nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody with a trick is all right in my book, Ruffy. Um, and with regards to Inverness going through, was it a wee bit of a shock? Should Dundee United be, you know, thinking long and hard about that? That's a game at home they should have been winning. Yeah, I think they will have. But I mean, Robin Nielsen keeps coming out and, and just distances a cup, you know. Their priority is getting back into the top division. He yeah. keeps saying that every interview. I don't know if that deflected a wee bit for the players, you know, the, the urgency you need getting into that game. Yeah. Maybe they took their eye off the ball thinking, oh, it's a league, this is... But it'll be a disappointment. Yeah, well, what, what's your what's your uh, determination tonight then? Is it just league survival or the Scottish Cup semi-final? No, I think a, a cup run and getting into the semi-final would enhance... Uh, <laughs> the way you're going to play in the, the games in the league for the, the remainder of the season. So it keeps the fans on board and it keeps the supporters on board. You know, no, I would, I'm not distanced at all. If we yeah. could get a win, it'd be great. Yeah. Would, if I could give you right now, winning the <laughs> Scottish Cup <laughs> or avoiding relegation, which would you take? That's an easy one, surely. Or avoiding relegation. Yeah. Right. Okay. I just thought I'd ask him. You never know with Rafi. <laughs> oh, you know, he, he starts thinking, oh, the, you know, your, your legendary yeah. status. So if Listen, you I tell you what, see if Partick get a result tonight, they'll kick on. Yeah. They'll Do you fancy on. them too? No, I think it's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. It's, it's no, a, you're you're turning <laughs> into him, by the way. It's a day uh, off. Oh, here's a nice quote then. Bang. I mean, what he was saying about Robbie Nielsen, you know what? It's, you've got to gather a bit of momentum. Yeah. Um, I think now Cali Thistle will, will drive on for the rest of the season. Dundee United, that's a, that's a tough one for them. They take confidence or whatever. Because I know Dundee United, it's a bread and butter. They try and get back into the Premier League. But every game you play and you want to win. Yeah, Xander McGowan says, uh, or McGowan, uh, my apologies, Xander, if I've pronounced your name wrong. Hearts 3 0 tonight. What is Ruffy think? Are you, do you think you well, can I sneak hope it's it? Not. Do you think you can, <laughs> do you think, do you think you can sneak not. it? Yeah, you always got to believe in the game. Does it, nil thistle. Doesn't matter who, no, I don't care what the score is. It doesn't matter who you're playing. If you don't believe you can go into a game and win it, then there's no point in turning up. You know, lots of things can happen during the game, but we will have to be probably at our best. If I could get 90 minutes of the First 45 minutes against Ross County, I would say, yeah, we have got a chance. Yeah, OK, I'm going Hearts 2-1. I think Hearts will win the game. Too much quality for me. Yeah, OK. No no point in being two-faced mm -hmm. here, we've got to be honest about it. Uh, I don't think any of us predicted. Did anybody predict St Mirren beating Livingston by a goal to nil? I, I had a draw. I had 2-1 Livy, I think. Yeah, yeah, I went for, for Livingston. But hey, fair play to St Mirren. There's a few draws in the win now. They, again, they'll get a lot of confidence for that, especially scoring in the, the, the last uh, couple of minutes. So good on them. Yeah, nil nil between Kelly and Motherwell. Here's the updated Premier predictions, Baz. It's uh, oh, nine points Ooh. the difference. And yeah, Ruffy, yeah. Ruffy just coming up on the uh, back end there, still way out in front. Um, Barry, I still think you could get one or two good results. You're back in it. Yeah, I need a. 
I need you to have a couple of bad weekends and I need to have a, a couple of very, very good weekends. Yeah. Um, but listen, I'll never give in. Keep going. Yeah, absolutely. I know that about you. You're a bad loser, so <coughs> there'll be all sorts of fights and treachery going on from Barry Ferguson. Um, I've got to mention, Ruffy, just before we go, <laughs> fair play to the fair play to the uh, public announcer at uh, Watford. Uh, you know, the Brendan Rodgers era is over. I think we can just, you know, uh, draw a line at, at, at this point on that. But it was at the two-one defeat, he started to play Depeche Mode. Just can't get enough. <laughs> Surely annoys up just to really annoy the life. I, I, didn't annoy, I didn't annoy the connection with Watford as well. Uh, you know, I think that's what it was all about. But yeah. these these guys who play these uh, tunes after it have to really watch what they're doing because a few of them have been sacked <laughs> because of what they've been playing. I, I think he left Watford in bad terms, didn't he? He went to Reading, was it? I yeah, think I think he did leave. Reading, he was yeah. at Watford, yeah. Yep. yeah. I think it was in bad terms he left. <clears throat> yeah. I think um, a wee dig back at him, which, which is fine. Well, absolutely. Who knows? If we looked hard enough, maybe we could see I've always been a Watford yeah, fan yeah. since I was yeah. a boy. You never know. That, that maybe what irked er them mm. along the way. Um, but nevertheless, I think uh, time is a great healer and I think some Celtic fans will look back on uh, Brendan Rodgers' time at the club uh, with great affection. But right now, uh, I think it might be still raw. Thanks to everyone who contributed on Facebook Live. Thanks to Barry and to Ruffy. I'm going to enjoy Ruffy's hospitality at Fir Hill tonight. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.